I want to start with some general brain anatomy. Some of this should be review in terms of directional terms and um, that's mostly all. And some of it will be a little bit new. My pointer here. All right, so let's start with looking at some general anatomy in terms of directional terms. If you remember from week one, we talked about how directional terms in the brain are a little different than they are in the rest of the body. Um, and that's because we are bipedal organisms where our brains kind of end up going like this. And then here's our spinal cord versus a rat, for example, their brains really just kind of face forward like that. Main point is here that the terms used in the brain are a little different than what's used, for example, in the spinal cord. So I would just kind of learn them as separately. And then if it helps to try to make sense of that, right, that's great. So for the front of the brain, um, the front is the anterior. In the brain, that's also called rostral. Rostral means forward just like anterior means front. The back of the brain is the posterior or caudal side. Posterior is like the tail end. So in the spinal cord, caudal is the base of the spinal cord. So like L2 is caudal to C1, um, whereas dorsal is equivalent to posterior. So caudal means different things in the spinal cord versus the brain. Dorsal is equivalent to posterior in the spinal cord. Remember that dorsal root ganglion is the same thing as the posterior root ganglion. In the brain, dorsal is superior because that's the backside. If you were to put a fin on the brain, like a dorsal fin of a shark, it would be up here. If you were to put a, a fin on your spinal cord, it would be back here. So the dorsal fin is on the backside um, that's a different meaning though in the spinal cord in terms of posterior versus superior. Um, ventral then is the last one. In the brain, ventral and inferior are the same. So it's the underside. So, and it kind of making sense of it's because of this turn that occurs, right? Rostral going to caudal, but then as we go down this way, we're going caudal as well. Okay, let's label some key components of the brain, and then um, we'll go into detail on some of the some of the brain regions. So first, what I want to do is label um, the lobes, and then we'll look at some of the other a little bit more specific super, superficial anatomy is what this is, and these are the same terms that you used for the skeleton, which is useful. So when you learn the skeleton um, of the brain, so for example, frontal lobe is this one, that's covered by the frontal bone. Down here, we've got temporal. Again, this is the lobe. We've got occipital. We've got parietal, it's like your parents watching over you. This is the cerebellum versus the rest of this is the cerebrum. We'll come back to that. Okay, what else do you notice about this brain? Uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on. It's got a lot of grooves and ridges. So these ridges here are called gyri. That's plural, um, and I spelled that wrong. Gyri, the singular is gyrus. The ridges are gyri, and in between each ridge, there are these grooves. These are called sulci. Singular is sulcus. And we're gonna have some names of some very specific gyri and sulci. 
One of these is going to be this gyrus, gyrus, either one right in the middle. This is called, I'm sorry, this is the sulcus right in the middle because the sulcus is the roof, right? This is called the central sulcus. And it is surrounded by two gyri, so two ridges. There's a gyrus right here and a gyrus right here. So the one that's in front of the central sulcus, the gyrus that's in front of the central sulcus is called the pre-central gyrus. And the gyrus that is just behind the central sulcus is called the post-central gyrus. These are going to have functions that we'll talk about later. Okay, last thing, I believe, two more. Let's see, we did the central sulcus. Um, this sulcus along here is called, so it's going laterally. It is called the lateral sulcus. And these are all landmarks, right? They're gonna be used to kind of orient us to where we are and give us some idea of where we are. We also could label rostral and caudal if we wanted to. That's superficial anatomy. One more view of the superficial anatomy um, and then with a slice through it. So what this is, is this section right here is a coronal or a frontal section. And this is one view you're gonna be seeing of the brain when you slice it this way. When you slice the brain that way, you see something like this. What exactly you see depends on how far rostral or caudal your slice is. Here are just some generals. Um, what I want you to notice here is really the white matter that's on, takes up a lot of the brain. Look at all this white matter. What is that? It's myelinated axons. So these are the tracks of the brain that connect one region to another. Then we've got two different types of gray matter, right? Right here and right here. I didn't really mean to cross that out. Gray gray, the two different places it's shown here is on the cortex itself so surrounding the brain. Here you can kind of see the importance of those gyri and sulci. Those add surface area to the brain. So having these grooves here make there be more cortex. This is thought to be important for higher order thinking that humans have. So cognition and planning and all the stuff we do. Um, so that's the cortex, it's gray matter. There's also gray matter inside the brain here, um, deeper. This, these are brain nuclei, right? Remember nuclei are collections of cell bodies, both of this gray matter. These are cell bodies of neurons. They're just in different locations. So we kind of clarify, nuclei are typically embedded in the brain. This cortex is on the edge, just what cortex means. Um, there's also two hemispheres of the brain. So this over here is your right hemisphere. This is your left, right? Because you're looking at this person. This is the brain over here. But this is the left side here. Um, so those are the two hemispheres that will, are connected also by a white matter tract. 